Well, a warm welcome to this talk and a very happy new year to everyone watching. Now, it's Tuesday the 2nd of January and I know I've gone quiet for a few days, took a few days off, but also I've been spending quite a bit of time on this book here. Now, this is the uh, Robert Kennedy book that a lot of you have heard of, The Real Anthony Fauci, uh, subtitle Bill Gates, Big Pharma and the Global War on Democracy and Public Health. Uh, by Robert uh, F. Kennedy, and uh, he'll be a person that you're certainly quite familiar with if you're in the States. Um, now, um, this book, i would known about it for some time, and uh, when I actually got my own copy, when I thought I'd have a bit of time over New Year to read it, I was really taken aback by the quality of the scholarship. If this was a PhD dissertation, I would pass it. <laughs> it is really well referenced. doesn't tell you what to think, just gives you the evidence. Now, I can't really summarise the book, but I just want to give you, a, a, sort of whet your appetite a little bit for this book, perhaps, by looking at the just, just the introduction. It talks about the collapse of liberal democracy worldwide. Now, it sounds like a melodramatic statement, but then the book gives pretty convincing evidence that this is what we are currently living through. Again, look at the book, read it for yourself. It does take quite a bit of time, just a few pages a day is really enough. But it does give you the information to make up your own mind. It is impressive. And it talks about our populations being uh, idealistic. Now, I certainly put myself in that category. All my life, I'd done what senior doctors told me to do. I worked in healthcare. The consultant said, do this. That's what you did. You followed the regulations. You followed the guidelines. Then all of a sudden, we got to a situation where the guidelines weren't quite as reliable as we would have liked them to be. It was a massive change. It was a culture shock for me. It took me a while to adapt. It took many of us uh, a while to adapt to improve our independent thinking, facilitated by evidence like that which is provided in this book. So, yeah, we were idealistic. Um, media and social media that are supposed to champion our health and our well-being and our rights... Um, they didn't. We lost civil rights. Uh, we didn't have evidence-based public health policy. And that debate really wasn't encouraged. So there's a big change. Um, fear uh, was promoted. Uh, obedience was promoted. Critical thinking was discouraged. And mass public health experiments were undertaken, according to this book. Don't take my word for it. Don't take Mr. Kennedy's word for it look at the book and engage the evidence for yourself it is really superbly referenced i think i think mr kennedy must have had a, a few research assistants with him on this book because it really is quite quite a, a staggering piece of scholarship i am really uh, in, in, impressed with it um he talks about mass propaganda censorship uh, orchestration and promotion of fear Suppression of dissent. Well, I think we can all relate to suppression of dissent. Manipulation of science and the use of force. Again, don't take my word for it. Don't take his word. I'm not telling you. This is what this book suggests. You see if you think the evidence is, is consistent with that. Inappropriate licensing technology. Uh, closing businesses, schools, churches. And I just want to read you a few sort of snippets from it. Standing at the centre of the mayhem, with his confident hand at the, on, the, on the helm, was one dominating figure. As the trusted public face of the United States government, responding to COVID-19, Dr Anthony Fauci set this perilous course and sold the American public on a new destination for our democracy. Well, it's a claim, you know, look at the book and see if you think the evidence is there. Uh, Mr. Kennedy says this, I thought I knew everything about regulatory capture because, of course, he's been in this game for 40 years, more than. Um, I thought I knew everything about regulatory capture and that I'd armoured myself with a, an appropriate shield of cynicism. But I was wrong about that. So I take some comfort in the fact that someone with Mr. Kennedy's experience was uh, somewhat taken in, uh, as, as I believe now I was somewhat taken in. Um... Now, Anthony Fauci gets more pay than any other of the 4 million federal employees, apparently. <laughs> Regulatory capture, user fees. NIH owns hundreds of vaccine patents. I didn't know that. He talks about robber barons and he talks about specific instances, about millions of pounds, millions of dollars 
of, of uh, compromise. Just a few of the quotes, just from the introduction. When I learned that, uh, the extraordinary fact the uh, disastrous health of American people was no longer a mystery, I wondered what the environment would look like if the EPA, that must be the Environmental Protection Agency, received 45% of its budget from the coal industry. Pre pre pretty good point. Um, Big Pharma is paying for a lot of the, uh, the regulatory fees. Um... Again, in, in, June, uh, in, June, in, in a June 9, 2021 interview, Dr. Fauci, he pronounced that Americans who questioned his statements were, per se, anti-science. Attack me, he explained, quite frankly. Attacks on me, he explained, quite frankly, are attacks on science. Uh, that strikes me as, meh, let me think, a little, bit, a little bit arrogant, a little bit complacent. I am the science. Quite, quite incredible, really. Um, the, the uh, yeah, let's get some humility back in medicine. I've just been interviewing in the last video the, the leading oncologist in the country, in my view, Professor uh, Angus Dalgleish, and he is a humble man, brilliant, capable, great doctor, great academic, but he's also got this humility. First, do no harm. What's wrong with what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Let's get rid of this arrogance and complacency and. Uh, Claire Craig referred to this as kind of a high priest syndrome, didn't she, when we, we interviewed her recently? Um, someone, someone published an article, get the book, read about it for yourself, in a scientific journal calling for legislation to expand federal hate crime protection to make criticism, doctor, criticism of Dr. Fauci a felony. Hate crime to criticise a doctor? As the world watched, Tony Fauci... Uh, dictated a series of policies that resulted in by far the most deaths one of the highest percentages high, high, one of the highest percentages covid-19 body counts of any nation on the planet only relentless propaganda and wall to wall censorship could conceal his disastrous management during covid-19's first year the us with 4% of the world's population suffered 14.5% of total covid deaths and of course the uk wasn't that far behind how much are we influenced internationally? You know, the, all, all nations did seem to go in this collective bizarre path, what I've called an international folly adieu, follow after the most, uh, you know, follow after the person with a mental illness. It's what folly adieu means. Um, talking about lockdowns, we have no, many, no, no way of knowing how many people died from isolation, unemployment, deferred medical care, depression, mental illness, obesity, stress, overdose, suicide, addiction, alcoholism, and the accidents that often accompany despair. A June, 20, a June 24, 2021 BMJ study showed that the life expectancy decreased by 1.9 years during uh, the quarantine in the United States. Talks about shattering lockdown, shattering the nation's once booming economy, putting 58 million Americans out of work, permanently bankrupting small business, including 41% of black owned businesses, some of which took generations of investment to build. In 20, talk, talking about, listen to this one. Uh, this, this subheading is enriching, enriching the, uh, the wealthy. In 2020, workers lost $3.7 trillion, while billionaires gained $3.9 trillion. You know, I would have thought the people, uh, I'm not a politician, but I would have thought the people that should get well paid in society are those that do the work. In 2020, workers lost $3.7 trillion, while billionaires gained $3.9 trillion. I mean, a trillion must be $1,000 billion. It's unimaginable. Some 493 individuals became uh, new billionaires and an additional 8 million Americans dropped below the poverty line. So hooray Henry for the 493 individuals that became new billionaires. Pity about the 8 million Americans that dropped below the poverty line. The human health and economic uh, costs of chronic disease dwarf the costs of all infectious disease in the United States. By this decade's end, obesity, diabetes and pre-diabetes are on track to debilitate 85% of American citizens. It's stunning, quite stunning. 
America is amongst the 10 most uh, overweight countries on earth. The health impacts of these epidemics, talking about obesity and the problems of ultra-processed food and that kind of thing, they are epidemics, which fall mainly on the young, eclipse those of the most exaggerated health impacts of COVID-19. And um, the referencing, this is just the referencing from one, one, one small section, I'll just put it on here um the the, ref- the referencing is absolutely uh uh exacting quite uh quite incredible and that, that that's just from that small introduction that i've just uh, i've just read um very well referenced and this goes on uh, through the uh through the whole book very well referenced very tightly written again not for me to tell you what to think not for mr kennedy to tell you what to think look at the evidence decide for yourself I'm not going to put links for this book because it's it's readily available. My my, my principle in buying books is try and buy it from the smallest private, uh, preferably family-run bookshop you can find, if not resort to other retailers that could be mentioned. Um, but uh, I, I'm I'm impressed. This wasn't expensive. It was about fourteen pounds, I think. So you know, okay, it's fourteen pounds, but you know, go halves with a mate or something because you'll both want to read it. It's um, I'm only about halfway through it, really, but but that that high quality of um, scholarship is maintained throughout the book. Impressive. Um, get evidence. Make up your own mind. Don't let people tell you what to think. We need to encourage independent thinking. Encourage evidence based thinking. And the reason I'm doing this, I have no financial interest in this at all. Of course, I've never met Mr. Kennedy. Don't know too much about his politics, to be quite honest. But I do recognise a nice piece of scholarship when I see it. That's what I am. I'm an academic, basically. Um, so there you go. Give me your thoughts. Thank you for watching.